to the League, exploring the League of Legends lore from A to Z. My name is Rebecca. And I'm John. My name is Mark. And today we're talking about the curator of the Sands, Nasus, who was released October 1st, 2009. Mm-hmm. He really has and been has around gone. forever. He yeah. Had, and he's gone through remarkably few changes. Yeah. As far as I can remember. Yeah, gameplay wise, I mean, I know he got a big visual update, which is nice. Mm, yeah. Because I look at looking at those old splashes, it's like, oof. <laughs> oh, now I gotta look. Yeah, he at looks some. much better now. I was trying to figure out if his galactic splash is still the live one, the one that they have on the wiki. It can't be because it's it's like proper OG. He's just in a dark void. There's a gradient. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I do love that skin. This is. Yeah, I'm remembering this one now. It looks like he has like Dobby elf ears yeah. as opposed to like the dog oh, he ears. Does. That... <laughs> and the uh, red eyes are very good. Of course, glowing <laughs> eyes. If you could see his feet, they'd be a fucking like a football field each, like true classic <laughs> riot style. And they're but, just like they kind of just look like regular feet in like sandals. They're he's sure. not rocking like the doggy feet. the doggy feet with the claws and shit. <laughs> mm. He's just got Birkenstocks on. <laughs> <laughs> Bar- Barkenstocks. Bar- <laughs> oh, God, I knew there was some joke in there. Uh, one one minute and 48 seconds we've been recording. <laughs> ruined. Episode ruined. Speed uh, run. <laughs> yeah, for anyone who wasn't playing ages ago, all the old splash arts were like, there was no background to them. It was just, they were just in a, as Mark said, a void of darkness. <laughs> Sure. It was really funny. Yeah. They had pizza feet. That's kind of the other big hallmark, I think. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> they all had I Kingdom Hearts feet. I noticed that, honestly. <laughs> we'll look, when we get to Pantheon, we'll talk about it more. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, Pantheon <laughs> was the epitome of the pizza feet. I, th- I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> he did always want to be a baker. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. On the universe page, he has a bio and three short stories, kind of. One of them is really a Zoe short story, although it is not linked on Zoe's page. Correct. Yeah. And two of them are by Graham McNeil, so calling them short stories <laughs> is <laughs> irony. Well, one of them is the Zoe one, so I didn't read it. It was a Zoe story. You said it was a Zoe story. It's true. Mm-hmm. It is. I know. had another 12-chapter-long cool Graham McNeil story I had to read. <laughs> <laughs> and that one took priority. That's fair. That, was, yeah. that one was a NASA story. That one story, was actually so. about NASA. He was in yeah. a little lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was kind of surprised. I expected him to also just show up for a chapter. I remember we did it for like a year, I think. Yeah. He's in it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I forgot about that. All right. As for impressions... I didn't look up any quotes. <laughs> I do occasionally play Nasus and Aram when I'm totally, totally forced to. He is not in my top 50 choices, I would say. <laughs> and like anyone who doesn't know how to play Nasus, I spam his E and go AP. And I know when you do that, he goes, ha! So that's my <laughs> Nasus impression. <laughs> I had a helpful note for you here oh. to like help remember what his voice sounded like, too. Oh, what is it? Which is just not useful at all for that impression. But, um... NASA sounds exactly like if uh, John Carlo Esposito had like a slightly deeper voice. I don't know who that is. Uh, mm. Gus from Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah, I, I could see that. never. Oh my god, trying to do a a deeper voiced Gus impression, slightly deeper. <laughs> I can't fathom it. He just doesn't sound like a dog. I don't know. What's yeah? He sounds voice? like a very sp- bespoke gentleman. <laughs> Oddly enough, I do have two dog quotes uh, written down here. <laughs> well, I knew, I knew but them. it's funny hearing them through the voice of essentially John Carlo Esposito. <laughs> Give me that animation. Someone put that right. together. Well, All right. So he says, right, let's, um, "Let's hear you. Let's hear your good, uh, your okay. good impression before people hear me try to do it for the voice. great impression." <laughs> I think you get. I think you're gonna do it. Uh, what does he say? He goes, "Um." Anthropomancy, divination by entrails. Oh, mm-hmm. that might be the old Shit. voice, though. Is a thing. That's, That's the right. one I remember more. <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Woof, woof, <laughs> woof. <laughs> and this is what he should sound like. <clears throat> no, I will not fetch that. <laughs> Because that's what dogs sound like. They that, is to what, talk. that is what dogs sound like. Every dog I've heard 
<laughs> he should just sound like Scooby. Human words that sounded like that. I like right. the idea of Nasus with his really like hyper intelligent good guy backstory, just sounding like Scooby Doo the whole time, even as a human before he was ascended. <laughs> or sounding like Doug from Up. <laughs> Is that what I said? Like? <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> All right. Now that we've shit on Nasus. <laughs> Uh, like he shits on lawns because he's a dog <laughs> got him <laughs> anywho <laughs> all right i'll go through nasus's bio it's long there's a lot in this bio <laughs> this is a three paragraph summary that i have of the bio <laughs> which is by, too much by anthony reynolds Lenny. oh thank you that's never oh, nice. it on the universe page okay Nasus was a normal smart boy in Shirima. He was a smart one, and his brother Renekton was the big fighting dumb one. That's what I read it as. <laughs> I don't think Renekton's actually dumb, but he's the big beefy brother. And then Nasus is the, the little smart one. Although, technically, Renekton's also the little one. Oh. I think Nasus well, is the younger. older brother. He's mm. younger. Doesn't mean he's physically smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's an alligator, John. Crocodile? <laughs> Crocagator? Crocagator? All right. Eventually, Nasus became a general, the youngest in history, while Renekton joined the military service and rose through the ranks there. Nasus wasn't a fan of war, though, and thought that preserving knowledge was more important, so he eventually convinced people to keep all of the books and scrolls from everyone that they murdered and put them in a library. He was still a general. Now, that's preservation, folks. (laughs) Right. (laughs) What did you say, Mark? Oh, I was saying, I mean, he he, he didn't like war, but he was a, a general, right? Yeah. Right? Yes, the I mean they kind of make even. a point. Yeah, <laughs> that he like he understands the importance of war in this matter, but he's he's just not a fan, you know. Mm. Sure, <laughs> this is our way of trying to make him sound better. I mean, he's fine. We'll get into it. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> After many many years, Nasus fell ill, and the emperor at the time pleaded for Sataka of the Ascended Host for Nasus to be tested at, by the Sun Disc or however it works uh, to become ascended. Sataka agreed, but he'd have to go immediately, even being sick. Renekton raced home because he was worrying or whatever Renekton does and saw that his brother wasn't doing well <laughs> while trying to climb all those, all those stairs. Is it a bunch of stairs? What is it? Probably. Okay. Seems it's like pretty it. pretty high yeah. up there. I mean, you're, you're not, ascending. <laughs> not very handy capable. There's, like... Yeah, there's no, there's no elevators. There's no here. elevator, folks. <laughs> Uh, so when Nasus couldn't complete his journey up the stairs, Renekton picked him up and carried him, knowing that he would be smited at the top, because you're just not allowed to be up there unless you're given permission or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they were both ascended to the jackal and the gator slash crocodile we all know today. Is he, he's a gator, right? He's a crocodile. He's a crocodile? <laughs> Fuck me sideways. <laughs> I, always forget which one he I remember the differences between the two. I never remember which it goes with which. Like, I know one has like a rounder snout and yeah. one's pointed, and I know one has teeth on the outside and one has teeth on the inside. I think a crocodile I don't know which is which. has a more rounded nose. Mm. But I like picturing Renekton in my head. I don't have his face. I don't, I haven't memorized the features of his beautiful face. You know, I don't know. Crocodiles are the ones got. that walk upright and they're like, you know, 20 feet tall. <laughs> they got a they big They carry weapon. their giant sword. <laughs> yeah. Their big bat lip, yeah. <laughs> All right. So Renekton became more brutal, which concerned Nasus, especially when Renekton ruined his big, beautiful library. Uh, they kind of worked it out, though. There's a brief mention here of Nasus trying to figure out what's going on with the other Ascended, who are all, like, you know, corrupted by war, becoming darkened, although they don't mention it by name in this bio. Uh when Azir is rightfully betrayed by Zareth, <laughs> Renekton is the one to drag Zareth into the tome, tomb, I always confuse tomb and tome, <laughs> tomb of the emperors beneath Shrima, and Nasus sealed them in there, as Renekton wanted him to. The sun disc fell, no more Shrima, whatever, we got that in Azir's bio. <laughs> Nasus hung out for several centuries until the t- t- tome... <laughs> <laughs> was opened by some regular dumb people and he knows Zareth is alive and free but maybe his brother too and that's how it ends mm. that's Nasus well done that's Nasus I'll hmm. summarize <laughs> thank you I feel like Nasus being struck by a wasting disease and then being ascended and having the 
ability to strike others with the wasting disease. Oh, is dark. It's dark. I like it. Rude. It's Although like a temporary good. wasting disease, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite as good. Although we do see it, it only in lasts the, a few seconds. Yeah, in the one short story, I think he uses it. But I like it. Yeah. It's a, it's a it's a nice way to like. It makes sense in the way they kind of incorporate gameplay into it. You know. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, this is kind of this. I mean, this was a long one for sure, right? Um, mm-hmm. I. I don't know. I, I kind of I, I like it for sure. I guess it's like it's so it's so big, right? And so much of it's also kind of <laughs> setting up these ideas of what's going on with ancient Shirima, right? Um, yeah. I feel uh, like the timelines of ancient Shirima are like so long they that they are. can be like hard. To, like when when I heard that um, when I heard that Nasus was like trying to figure out oh like all of all of my brethren who fought in Akathia and saw horrors and are now turning into dark and basically because their minds have been destroyed. Like, I want to research what's going wrong with them. The fact that that happened, like, so far before the failed Azir Ascension 2 was, like, it really screwed with my own understanding of the timeline here. Like, I, I sure. feel like I thought either the other was happened first or, like, the timeline between them was I had longer. figured that the dark and were much much earlier than just everything i guess i don't know but yeah especially because in the bio they're one right after another they kind of briefly mention that nasus is studying the dark and, and then immediately it goes into azir's failed ascension yeah now they do say that like it's centuries i want to say that he's just he's doing his studies so it's like a lot of time <laughs> has passed i guess to yeah. come to your point john like yeah. I, I think that that if the <laughs> I guess why I'm frustrated with with Shreem as a whole is that it just feels like it's been put on a big pause, like in the lore. Like I feel like these are a lot of cool ideas that could really coalesce into a really strong setup, um, but they just haven't like paid much attention to the region as a whole. So it's like it it needs more detail and kind of filling in in some of these spaces. Almost does that make sense? Yeah. Like yeah, you're I feel about- like it gotta. I'll go ahead. I was going to say, like, you're talking about, like, the idea of, oh, they had a Cathy happen, and then, like, hundreds of years of dealing with the void and stuff is, like, t- twisting things. Um, I don't know, like, I would like to see maybe a sto- like, some story about what it, about that, rather than just, like, these big moments, like, also kind of what's happened across these hundreds of years. I don't know. Yeah, and was the void forgotten? Like, why wasn't Nasus fighting with them? Because he was studying. Yes. He, he went down to his library. <sighs> and Renekton wasn't either. Yeah, and I know that there was like the even after the initial war, there was like the secondary one with the big flying temple that Malphite was a part of too. Like how mm. much further after the mm. initial failed war was that, and how much <laughs> before the fall of Shirima was that? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I guess Shirima has so much history. Right. I mean, I guess maybe to be fair, like in modern days, maybe some of these details don't matter as much, but you know, because it's so long ago, right? Hundreds of years kind of start to flow into each other. Um, <laughs> Basically, like, yeah. thinking of dinosaur times. Yeah. It's all, it's all fake numbers. <laughs> sure. It's just right. so long ago. It's impossible to comprehend. <laughs> right? I mean, I think that's a fair, a kind of a fair point. I don't know. I guess it's, it's, my sticking point is also that, like, so much of that detail kind of also would help maybe make Azir more, more tolerable, right? Or more, like, <laughs> like, cons- I, I don't know. It, it I don't know. I I I know. No, it's not. We're not like talking about Azir specifically, but it's it's hard with Nasus because he was in such like a primo position with it. Like where he like he he seems to have some level of fealty we assume to Azir, right, or respect for him. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. So I kind of need to know what was his perspective on Azir bucking tradition and and what was his opinion when it came to like slavery. Is it something he saw was like? I mean, Nasus. He's from a different time, right? You know, like maybe I mean, he thinks the concept sure, of slavery is but... is is, is, is pop- like I don't know, right? Or I'd like to understand more of I some mean, of those I things. I think he is kind of pro slavery in the in the one story when you know, the Graham McNeil story faces off against Azir or Zir, uh, Zareth and taunts him and calls him a slave. That's true. I did wonder if he just said that because he knew it would really make Azir or it's like Zareth. Zareth yeah. uh, mad angry but right, possibly yeah. but it, i think it'd be more reasonable that like yeah he's he was chilling and doing this stuff for centuries across like that where it would that was just the accepted practice and so now all of a sudden he's he's coming back into the modern world where that's not you know practice anymore right i don't know and i feel like another another thing about like 
Sharima is that like I so often associate Azir with Shariman things, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But he he didn't ascend, which means that he had regular old human life. So like in the scheme of things that we've been reading about <laughs> in Sharima, Azir is such a tiny, tiny part of it. Like, yeah. who the fuck True. was emperor for most of the... <laughs> yeah, the, we, they mention other emperors that Nasus knew. I think That's in true. one of the stories, Azir says that he doesn't really... Or not Azir, Jesus Christ, all these things. <laughs> Nasus says he doesn't really know what Azir stands for, but knows that he stands against Zareth. And so that means he's on Azir's side. That That's yeah. all that really matters to him. Enemy of my enemy. <laughs> yeah, mm. kind of. That yeah. everything with Zareth though is just was just bringing up all the old frustrations I have with that story though. Like at some point, Nasus says like, "Oh, when Azir was betrayed by his boyhood friend," and I'm like, "You mean his slave? <laughs> he was betrayed by the boy he had enslaved his entire life?" And he was like, "Yeah, man. Yeah, no worry, man. I'm gonna free you. Yeah, it's totally gonna happen. I promise." <laughs> but I was just so frustrated. <laughs> sure. I. I mean, I guess like. If if it's I extended, not, it's not on Nasus. He's got a whole thing, other thing going on. But sure. it was just. <laughs> I think it's like if I extended blues. trust to the writers, I would trust that that's just Nasus's in-universe perspective, and maybe that could be yeah. something that's developed on later. Of like, oh, mm-hmm. as he comes to realize, maybe like coming to grips with the like the fact that he was so, you know, integral to the practice of that, and kind of like feeling the guilt and weight of it, um, coming to grips with some truths that maybe are not as true as he thought like that would be great especially for someone who's all about finding knowledge and, and truth and stuff mm-hmm. he's like the type of person to deduce what's what's going on you know but i don't yeah that would that would be really interesting that would add a lot of depth to it because as of right now they have really glazed over the fact that Zareth's betrayal maybe had some merit to it <laughs> <laughs> sure right i think um to my what i was really saying is that I don't trust necessarily that that's yeah. the case. I think they just like they just like more the image of Zareth as this big like comic book villain who's giving monologues yeah. and shit. You know, um, they do, they yeah. do. Which they, if they wanted to do that, just don't make him his slave friend. He should have yeah, just make, been his boyhood friend who yeah, was like jealous scheming, of his wealth and his power. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like just you know, a little courtier, piece. He was just like a, yeah, he was just a little piece of shit <laughs> the whole <Sure>. time. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's, you know, this again is like, God, I, I feel so bad for Nasus that it's just making me want to bitch about his know, stuff. But he's so, yeah. it's so important to like what a lot of like drives Nasus as well, because that in turn caused him to have to seal Renekton in a way. It's hard mm-hmm. because like, I don't know, it's it's hard because like I have trouble understanding how Zareth is the way he is now, right? If we just mm-hmm. are like, okay, he's, this is what we got is him acting this way. Um it just seems so bizarre to me that, like, he would have done those things to Renekton almost. I don't know. Does that make sense? That he would have, like... He comes yeah. off like a real dick in Bloodlines, I'll just say. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's where I'm getting stuck up on. He's, like, really sick of him. That You know, that he and Renekton have been locked together for way too long. And he's just, like, you know when you're, like... So, you just want to punch your roommate in the face, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> After being locked in a room with them for centuries and centuries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've all been there. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, but as for Nasus' bio, I guess to get back to that. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I definitely didn't hate it. Um, I like that Nasus, Nasus and Renekton both look like such villains to me, like in-game and when you see them. And the fact that they're just like, they're good guys. And his relationship with Renekton is sweet. And Renekton, I'm excited to get to. He seems a little bit more complicated than I would have thought, which yeah. I like. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's it's one of those things where like it's hard to... It's hard to not see like demigods as villains yeah. in general yeah. because like the lives of humans in general mean very little yeah. <laughs> to demigods. And as a human myself, <laughs> I don't <laughs> dig that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, on the demigod scale, I feel like Nasus and, and Renekton are sure. Uh, they have empathy and, and whatnot still. Even yeah. For people. They yeah. seem better than the a lot of the Targonian demigods. Oh my God, right? Sure. Yeah. Although the- we ha- do have theories about them not being in control as much the Targonian what are they called? Well I mean the aspects aren't oh, in control aspects. but like yeah the, the well the, av- the avatars of the aspects aren't, aren't as much as whereas much the aspects control. themselves are whereas the ascended are they're still themselves. Yeah they're just yeah. exaggerated versions of themselves it mm-hmm. seemed. With sure. animal parts or whatever yeah, it seemed like kind of like <laughs> they get like the Captain America serum basically yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> but like really in overdrive 
Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, to that point, like, and that's one of the things I'm liking about Nasus through his stories is that he's another one of these champions that's been around for thousands of years, but that's very much at the forefront of something they, they kind of realize about his character. Is it like, hey, if you're a normal human and you were do, like, like in wars and shit for thousands of years, it might fuck up your psyche a bit. You know, you might be a little cr- a little nuts, um, which they do with a lot all the darken. Um, so I, I guess I like that. That's something they seem to be aware of and are willing to kind of tackle through him a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, next up, probably timeline wise, is unfortunately the one you didn't read. Oh, the Zoe one. Twilight yeah, that's of true. The Gods by Graham McNeil. So do we want to go through the summary of it? In it's... between the fall of Shirima and the revival of Azir. Okay. Yeah. Is there a reason this is on Nasus's bio or on his page? Is he in it? He is. Mm. He's a, I would say he's an <laughs> integral part of it, despite not being uh, in, it? in it for Physically a lot. In it? Okay. Yeah. He's also, he's not in it for a lot. And he really is only kind of mentioned in one specific context through a lot of it. I think, Part of what why it's linked is because it it gives a massive amount of insight into like the Darken and kind of the Ascended in their kind of mm. very last Twilight, which is kind of a very interesting context to put Nasus in. Um, it's also hard to say that this is necessarily a, it's kind of a Zoe story, but it's also maybe like a different avatar or host of the aspect, right? <laughs> yeah, know, it's definitely little... an aspect of Twilight. I, yeah, I should be more specific. Yeah. It's an aspect of Twilight story yeah, as opposed to a Zoe story. Mention Zoe, but I can't imagine anyone else that it would apply to. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah. And that's a question of what aspects. We do you want do we want to like go through through the events of it or at least as they pertain to NASA's? Um I think it'd be good because I yeah. I mean in general it was also it was also just a very interesting story. It's really good. <laughs> I really like um, this one. I think I read this all the way well, back in Aatrox, and I remembered a lot of it because it's oh, it was a really good good starting point for legal lore. Unfortunately a lot of it hasn't lived up. Um <laughs> All right, so we'll try and get through this quickly. So, uh, yeah, so like John said, it's like an, it's after the failed ascension of Azir, but it's before like proper dark and wars, I guess. It's kind of just as those are f- fomenting, um, and it definitely way before Azir is back on the, back on the scene. Uh, and it is following one of the Ascended. Uh, there's a lot of names in here. I'll give it once, and I won't ever say it again. Uh, Ta'anari, I want to say. Um, who is like a, a panther esque ascended uh, with a bowed, you know, bent back, you know, crooked permanently. Um, and he also, is. Also, I do want to say real quick this isn't actually before the Darken Wars. This is after the Darken Wars. It's just that they don't, as as the Darkens themselves, they don't refer to it as the Darken War. They say the War of the Sunborn. And then they specifically call out, although others give it a darker name. <laughs> I guess that's a good point, to be fair. A darkened I, name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they might as well say. I, the one thing I don't, I guess, to that point, the one thing I'm not sure about is kind of how much after the end of this story, because there are a few darkens still kicking around after this and how long that time period was. But that's, yeah, that's a fair point. Anyway, so Panther Man as he will be called from now forward. Uh, he's he's working with, he's got this this sort of servant, human servant, who from the description, if you know anything about Zoe and the aspect of Twilight, you would pick up ha- very similar in appearance. Um, it's kind of, at almost her behest, has gathered up all of the other ascended. No, not all of them are there. Nasus isn't there. Rost isn't there. And I think there may have been one or two others that are not. Um, but he goes in, they're in the ruins of, I don't know, Nashrame. doesn't really matter. Um, He's got them all together. Um, they have all also their big, their ascended hosts. They each have like a thousand warriors to kind of follow along with them. Uh, and he is essentially kind of pleading with them like, hey, we've been fighting. Um, you know, we've been doing this for hundreds of years. We were once, you know, brothers and sisters, etc. cetera. Um, you know, we could rule the world together, right? Instead of, you know, fighting over the scraps of Shurima. And as, it's, as he's doing it, it's kind of describing all the different ascended who have gathered. And they're all... Kind of like Nasus Renekton, and their animal types, um, but you can see that they are starting to twist and corrupt. There's a pair of twins who are like just insane, uh, insane sort of fortune tellers. Um, shit's fucked, and eventually he pulls out Sivir's weapon, which they call the Chalikar. It was originally Sataka's weapon from back in the day. 
it's a very big, powerful fuck off object. Seems to have, seems to have some connection to Targon or whatever. Um, and then one of these ascended kind of attacks him. This turtle headed one called uh, Shuyan, Turtle Man, Turtle Man, <laughs> Panther Man, <laughs> fight it out, Panther Man. Uh, he is, he uses like kind of like Zoe's ultimate almost, or he just blinks, yeah. he flashes. Um, so he manages to get the upper hand and survive and win. Uh, doing so kind of kill is leading to his form starting to kind of disintegrate. Um, but he kind of determines that, you know, this is going to, we're going to stop this here and now. And uh, Misha, who is this sort of aspect of the twilight, who's been helping him, this mortal, um, they essentially do some sort of like, they almost like, do they create the moon? Or does like it, the moon just kind of show up where it had not been in the sky? Yeah, I, I like... <sighs> <laughs> they kind of pulled the power from the moon, I guess. So I guess, maybe it yeah. Was... <laughs> huh. So they use the moon's power. Very Targonian. And it, yeah, and it yeah. kills off all of the Darken, except for a couple. Like, everyone else is... They're killed or they're reverted back to their human form either way. That's what happens to Panther Man. Um, a few of them escape. Uh, but Misha, the tw- aspect of the Twilight, essentially said, this is going to be the end of it. We'll hunt them down, and we'll, you know, if we need one thing to be able to deal with these last remaining ones. She cuts out Panther Man, who's now just a human, cuts out his heart, um, and I think she grabs a hold of someone else's blade and, you know, sends someone to go do something with it. The point being that that's how they're going to capture the rest of them, is they're going to pull a Rost and put them in weapons and shit instead of <laughs> killing them like they've done here. Um, so that's mostly the, the, the summary of events. Um, the descri- the writing is is very good. There's an ac- there's an action sequence that was just fucking great where he's fighting this turtle guy. They're like they're massive. They're these massive ascended, and there's these like big thousand armies who have kind of gathered around to watch this whole meeting. And at one point, they crash into the stands, and people are falling in, and they're like fighting and like crushing people. It's very like primal rage if you ever played <laughs> that. Um, it's fucking great, really. Yeah, it was very cool. Yeah. Uh, and it was a very interesting, it's a perspective that we don't get a chance to see. We hear a lot about the Dark and War, we hear a lot about the Ascended going mad, but we don't get a chance to see what they were like right before it all went bad for them. Um, yeah. And this was this was a very good sense of, like, some of them were very much like, uh, you know, they had all fought each other. Some of them were still friends with each other, despite having fought each other. Some of them were openly hostile towards each other, even in this kind of parlay situation. Um, I mean, that one turtle-headed dude was like, oh, sweet, Sivir, or the uh, Sataka's weapon. Like, I can, so I can kill you and I'm king now? Okay, I'm going to try to do that. <laughs> he's sure. like, no, that's not how it works, but he's like, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. But there was a lot of cool stuff there. Um, so I know there's some connection specific okay. to Nasus. I guess that's maybe what you're about to say, because I think... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember the details so, of it. Yeah, it was... Um, so the... Um, him pulling out Sataka's weapon was a surprise to all of them because mm. none of them knew where it was. All they knew was that Nasus had buried it with Sataka um, and had not told anybody where to find it or anything because probably because he knew that they'd try and dig it up and use it. <laughs> and it's a very powerful weapon. Like it wasn't just, it was like enchanted and very strong. Um, so when he showed up with it, they were like, the fuck did you get that he's like oh uh you know Misha here told me like how the fuck did she know how to get <laughs> like oh she just went and talked to nasus it's no big deal you're like no big like we haven't seen nasus in generations he's yeah been invisible like he's just no one has seen him or talked to him and they're like oh no he's just up on this he's hanging out by himself in this library on the top of a cliff he's cool um yeah. it is in fact i think the cliff that they reference in the the next story the Ouroboros uh, story mm. that they yeah. have to like you know climb up but um mm. uh but yeah and the close item, yeah. so yeah they, they they got that from them and they also it's kind of implied too that however like whatever I don't know how true it is but it, like whatever method they're using to seal like maybe they even if Nasus didn't tell them how to do it, something he told them gave them the information that they would need in order to actually start sealing these people in weapons. Yeah. Probably he, from his vast library. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's that's kind of the implication for sure, um, is that he is, um, even in, in a remote sense, somewhat in... He's somewhat pulling the trigger on, on them in the same way that Tanari is. Because that's a, that's a good thing to kind of note, is that even when he's 
orchestrating this whole thing and committing to killing everyone himself kind of included um he's still very heartbroken about it um so we would can only assume that that would add to like this because the big thing about nasa is he, he seems to be constantly weighted by like guilt but what he's done to renekton and there's almost like a little echo of that in helping to seal or kill away um the all these ascended too right like they still kind of see each other as brothers and sisters even if now they've come to blows but that's like another whole running th- thread through uh panther man's internal like monologue is like <laughs> i'm still a, a human a mortal human in my mind and i've just had to live hundreds of years and we've gone from being allies to rivals and just all these memories that it's just like you have no regard for you know mortal lives right like he just like has no sense doesn't even care about them these things as people almost you know i think that and also the fact that so ascended normally kind of regenerate right you break an arm the arm heals back up but what we see is that if you take a serious enough blow it does not heal right um you know so he's got a permanently like crooked bent over back he can't stand straight and like turtle man is starting to have like these weird sort of spike growths that are not supposed to be there those one of them has like a wolf head and his jaw is like it mentions that there's a growing disfigurement of it um or like their fur is starting to like mat or like just you know they're just constant they're just getting worse degrading physically you know which is it's it's interesting, right? That that would kind of lead you to be a crazy, you know, murderer <laughs> warlord, right? I mean, you can fix some matte fur, you know. <laughs> they do it at vets all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to find vets that will uh, take patients that size. <laughs> <laughs> the weight I limit was like thirty five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you call him Panther Man, a Turtle Man, like it's a weird superhero. Sorry, there's a lot of names. Me about Puma Man. I know, right? <laughs> okay, you were there too. It's just an old mystery science scene episode. Puma Man. It's a great one. I recommend it. Anyway, <laughs> there. Uh, they also say the line, uh, "You and I, we held the line where Akathia once stood." Mm, yeah. Um, and that that story about Akathia was called where Akathia once stood, Mm -hmm. which I didn't think was worth mentioning, but that line comes up. (laughs) Here he is mentioning it. (laughs) Comes up several times in several stories. I wonder like. They were really into it. Yeah. I mean, I get the sense that all these stories were, I would guess, were just written around the same time, which is why they're very neatly fitted together. It's like, which is great. I like it. Um, But maybe that's like a hallmark of it is that they like really like that, not that title. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, also, kind of going back to Nami, they do mention when he's regaling, um, like remembering with fondness the stories of the battles they fought together, they do specifically mention, uh, uh, Syfax, my brother, we waged war on the abyssal monsters when they poured from the ocean rift on the eastern coast. We fought them for ten days and nights to the very limits of endurance, but we drove them back. Hmm. Mm. This is reminding me... Well, that's because I'm watching Stranger Things again. <laughs> There's so many entrances to the Upside Down. There's just like these random little entrances to the void that they keep finding. Sure. They need like a super-powered child to close all these gates. <laughs> and they have... T- they have... Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, that's, that means Talia. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. She's not a child. Maybe. I guess. No. I was I was gonna pitch Ezreal by accident because he seems to be doing things accidentally, but he's also not a child. <laughs> mm-hmm. Annie. It's all gonna come down to Annie. I mean, Talia's maybe. pretty young. That's she's true. young, she's yeah. Younger. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. The other the only other thing is they just so he like I mentioned this this our narrator Tanari uh, he blinks which is essentially like a flash and the description of it is horrifying it's like he's moving through this tunnel and there's just horrible void things all around him and even though it's in the blink of an eye it feels like it takes years and it makes me wonder is that what it feels like to use flash in League of Legends (laughs) that's what you're doing (laughs) or every time Zoe ults which is on like a four second cooldown (laughs) I feel like she would probably get a kick out of that though for some reason it's like it's like Space Odyssey or like (laughs) Just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, doesn't like Nightcrawler go some yeah. some horrible place when he mm. yeah when he poops when he bamps he <laughs> oh, that was, through, what uh, is it called when he bamps 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 yeah yeah he goes through like a kind of a nightmare plane mm. great which is why it smells like sulfur every time he comes mm. out on the other end mm. I thought he just oh. farted <laughs> that is it it's a fart plane but it's still a nightmare so that's a nightmare yeah. <laughs> 
Um, okay. All right. But yeah, that was that was that story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I highly next recommend up, it. Uh, yeah, definitely read it. It's good. Uh, next up, chronologically, I would assume is Ouroboros by Vi- Ryan Vernier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is his color story. It's much shorter. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, I don't think I've seen that author name before. Which, um, yeah, I like. Yeah. I like this a lot. I was. I was kind of surprised. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So it's following Nasus. Uh, he's traveling along. It seems like he's kind of traveling back to the east coast of that tower that was kind of mentioned before. And he's got this child kind of along with him, this young this young boy who's kind of along with him and is kind of peppy, even if he's a little worn by the travel. <laughs> and and Nasus is in a little spacey kind of throughout this. He's he's traveling along, but you know, kind of reflecting on like, oh, the the eons kind of wash on, and there's just these moments, and this isn't the life for a young boy. We'll find you a home soon, etc. They get to the cliff, they climb up the cliff, and normally where he would, I guess, expect like fires or like a sort of a watch, like a, I don't know, like a lighthouse keeper almost, like a couple, um, there are some, some kind of raiders there, and he kind of confronts them, and as this little boy goes to throw a, a rock at, at the raiders, uh, Nasus cries out, Renekton, no, um, and as the conflict sort of begins, this, this image of this boy just kind of fades away, and we kind of realize like that was this almost like vision of Renekton as a young boy that was kind of is kind of around him when he's in his less lucid states almost um, and then he just kills the hell out of the raider a couple of raiders <laughs> uh, he, he like cr- just jumps on him and crushes him and he rips like a sword out of someone's hand and it's just disgusting and uh, they the raiders had kind of come with a message from Zareth and there's kind of a bit of tension about like oh the, the new emperor has comes with a message and it's it's Zareth kind of sending a, a taunt essentially um, do they mention the city that they go to in the other story here I don't remember uh, I didn't write it down I don't think so they did. I, don't I don't think know. so they just um, he, he, he chases them off essentially um and it, it seems to kind of stir him a bit from his his kind of waking, you know, wandering, um, and he mm-hmm. kind of, you know, turns east, I guess, towards where he shows up next. Yeah, I like the ghost reveal. It was some real scrub shit. Mm. <laughs> where do you think we are? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took me a minute. I was like, <laughs> the first time he called him Renekton, too, I was like, I thought oh, he, was he just thinks like, he's he... Renekton. I thought it was just like a like a habit. <laughs> To kind of call him Renekton at first, I didn't think he was hallucinating him, and then he said goodbye, brother, and I'm like, did you just let that boy die? <laughs> <laughs> You're an ascended, you dumbass. <laughs> well, that's kind of on. That's kind of on brand for Nasus at this point. Is is kind of <laughs> just kind just of stands there. letting things happen to other people. It seems. Yeah, yeah, he really does. There's so many champions. I talked about this recently that just like disappear for a while, and he's just one of those. He's just like hanging out in Ruterra for a while. <laughs> Yeah. Hiding somehow, reading, you know, reading. reading. Nasus is you if you were in ascended. He's like, <laughs> I'm gonna go hang out in this fucking library by myself and just read books for the next three thousand years. I would raid Don't a bakery though every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Maybe he did have a bakery. You know, he's been around for like millennia. He could have had a bakery for about twenty, thirty years. <laughs> get the get the demigods to get him him and Pantheon just. Have the perfect uh, Bake it out, bookstore man. slash bakery. <laughs> Aww. Oh, that'd be so cute. <laughs> I love it. Morgana tries to work there, but she burns all the cookies. They have to fire her. But they don't know how because they love her so much. Because he's so, you know. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> I, uh, at, the, at the end of it, when he gives the, uh, he sends the surviving raider with a warning to Zareth. And he says, uh, tell your emperor that his cycle nears its end, which I feel like is the best olden olden day version of like, you know, I came here to kick ass and chew <laughs> bubblegum. I like it. it. I like it. Nasus has some good lines. I think, you know, back when we were talking about his him just sounding like a not like a dog. I, I kind of like it. it. It maybe it throws. It no, off yeah, a I don't bit. actually want him to sound like a dog. No, sure. <laughs> no, no, no. As being like the way they they chose to kind of voice him. Like even the old NASA's voice, I think was very. Uh, I don't know. People remember it, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I like I like his. Not me, but well, <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I, yeah. I kind of like the way he talks and and sort of, you know, the verbiage they give him. I don't know. Yeah, and it was a good. 
relevant taunt for the title of the story too mm. Mm. sure yeah we don't have that i feel like sometimes we don't have that like the story titles are just kind of whatever um <laughs> Yeah. And yes. I guess for those unfamiliar, Ouroboros is the eternal cycle of destruction okay, and thanks. rebirth. Yeah, I didn't know what it was, but I don't want to sound like a fucking idiot. <laughs> you just said that like I was supposed to know what it was. Yeah, it's like the two snakes that are like e- always like eating each other's tails. Kind of, right? Oh, okay. That's what that's called, right? <laughs> nom, nom. <laughs> and then they <laughs> that's say the that, sound yeah. they make. Is they... Yep. <laughs> oh, and yeah, he uses his, his wither in this, which is pretty, pretty oh, cool. Yeah. Like uh, oh, a guy's like, cool. That's yeah, a guy's like chest starts to like almost rot and kind of just cave in all of a sudden. It's great. You can see the <laughs> things like... I, I appreciate. Oh. <laughs> just horrible <It's>... murder. <laughs> <laughs> There's quite a bit of it with Nasus. There so is, and I feel yeah. like this is done a little bit in this one, but way more in Bloodline mm-hmm. too, where like they describe his combat in a way that I would not expect. For like the way he walks on uh, in in game. Like always, just leads me to believe that he is kind of like slow, pondering giant thing. Yeah. And then they describe like, oh no, he just fucking leaps into the air and like tears this dude in half, and then <laughs> bites down on another one's head and just crushes it. Like, it's oh like, bro, shit! You have an axe. Why do you even have that thing? <laughs> That's for his non-lethal kills. <laughs> he likes to get them close and personal. <laughs> Yeah, I think or to bash him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but genuinely, like here and more so in Bloodlines. Um, gosh, maybe even even some of the descriptions I get for the Ascended in the other one too. Like all of these action pieces, I could really visualize, and I would really love to see Nasus like. I'd love to see this like animated in some sort of really stylized two D way <laughs> of him like leaping yeah. up into the air. It's very anime in my mind the way yeah. he kind of moves and fights, which is cool. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right, we want to hop in Bloodlines next? Is that Let's right? Let's do it. All right. Bloodline up next. Yeah, God. So we talked about this one with us here, but for the Nasus's part, he is in the city of... I didn't write it down. Starts Ooh. with a V. Oh, no. Oh, shit, they say it so many New fucking York, times. Right? He's it's in New York Pe- City. Pec- something in the, in the <laughs> He's New in York City. If he can make it here, he can make it anywhere. <laughs> He's in Chicago, right? <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'll find it. Okay, so he's in this Shreeman the City. Yeah, he's sure. in the Shreeman City. This is at this point in his year is back up and around. Nasus has kind of come out here, and he is seeking the someone with an ascended bloodline, so a, an ancestor of Azir's. I don't ever know exactly why. It's just powerful, I guess. There's just some old magic in there, I guess. Mm, he kind of just yeah. talks about like it brought Azir back. It kicked started the Oasis of the Dawn. I guess it's powerful. It's good shit to have. But he's looking for one. He kind of sense. He seems to have like a natural sense of there being one kind of around here. Um, the city is kind of it's in the ruins of like was once a grand city, and it's just kind of now people live there and eke out a living. Oh, you look like you have it. The the city name, John. Vicora. 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 Okay. So in Vicora, um, they have a they, it's a functioning city on top of the ruins of it. And as Nasus is walking around, um, he's kind of. Uh, he conceals himself and he bumps into Talia who is also there and, and he picks her back up and she's like oh that's weird he's a really big guy who everyone is kind of avoiding and his legs are bent all weird <laughs> uh, well I guess he's just very nice um, <laughs> and she scurries off because what's going on is that Sivir was kind of stabbed at the start of all of this and Talia has found Sivir and is kind of nursing her back to health for Nasus's part he's going to where they have erected kind of a makeshift sun disc um, in like a crude like a crude rendition of what was once. And as he's going through, he's like, he's almost getting like pissed off looking around at like, you know, this used to be so glorious. I remember when I strode through here with 10,000 soldiers behind me and now like it's shit. Right. And I look at the sun disc and it's just, it's made out of bronze and copper and they're holding Such up a fucking wire, hipster. Right? He's so <laughs> mad. He's so mad at all the people too, for building over it. I'm like, what did you want them to do, man? He's like, I can't believe these mortals built this pathetic rendition of what it was. I'm like, they, they're here. broke as shit. And there's like 12 of them. Right. Yeah. I can't believe they couldn't stack, you know, hundred foot <laughs> pillars on top of each other. Like I could when I, I was a god. <laughs> Just so done so precisely that no, not a drop of mortar was required. Right? Yeah, all right. Yeah, I think he's maybe remembering things a little. <laughs> they were just that good. Glasses there. I really do want that hipster Nasus skin oh, now. Hipster Nasus. Sure. So like, <laughs> he's got a pour over. Or like... I was into Vizora before it was cool, <laughs> and uh... <laughs> well, mm, I'm, I am liking it for sure. 
So he comes up on on this sun disk where there is a uh, a hawk priest who is kind of claiming to be a. Uh, uh, an ancestor, or not ancestor, the opposite, a descendant of Azir. <laughs> and he kind of, he, there are guards that try to stop Nasus as he, you know, tries to approach. He doesn't kill them, he just knocks them away. He gets up to the, uh, the, the hawk priest, and then he ults, and it causes this, like, sort of sandstorm that, you know, the sand ripping through this guy's, fl- this guy's flesh. He takes him, he presses him up against the, the sun disc, which is like scalding hot metal. Um, and that's just, I guess, from this is able to determine, hey, you know, you're not actually as here as the sun but there is like someone sucks. else. It was know. like the old witch trials. <laughs> like, we'll <laughs> throw works. her in a lake covered in rocks, and if she lives, then she's a witch. Although, I guess to be fair, he is claiming to be a witch, so I mean... Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, he says it's, they kind of say it like he smells the blood, and he's able to, like, that's how he's able to figure it out so i don't know if this was just a show of force or or what um or if it needed to be burnt and that's like how it needed to happen i don't know he was he was a little rough with the guy it's all (laughs) it's also worth mentioning that when we talk about the guards that were guarding this dude they had helmets on and one oh yeah helmet shaped like a uh you know a gator and the other one had a uh, a croc gator and the (laughs) other one had a helmet shaped like a jackal yeah. And like if I'm if I'm a guard <laughs> and I'm wearing a helmet that is uh meant to honor a certain god and then that god comes <laughs> up to me and is like up. hey can I can I pass through here I'm gonna let him fucking pass. Right. That's yeah. so weird to me. Yeah, I don't know. It it I almost like the idea that they they weren't even trying to fight him and he's still just like you know knocked him out the fucking park. <laughs> They were about to step aside, and it just wasn't fast enough for Ness. He really likes patience when it comes to it. Um, anyway, he, this this guy is not Azir's descendant, um, but he can sense that there is someone who is. Um, but he also sees this war host approaching and leading them all, cackling over all of them, is Zareth. Uh, Zareth is leading this attack. <laughs> he really is just like the Wicked Witch of the West, dude. <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, God, yes. and he drops a house on Nasus at the end. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's this little ruby slipper sticking out. <laughs> anyway. I really like it, though. <laughs> okay, so uh, so what's going on? So Siver and Talia are kind of holed up. Fighting is breaking out in the city. Nasus is blowing past people who are crying to him for help and trying to get help, and he is kind of mm-hmm. like turning a cold shoulder. Although he does feel bad about it, and he does kind of think and <laughs> have like, "Oh man, more people that I'm, I'm getting letting die." But this is important. He goes and he finds Sifra and Talia, um, and he kind of comes to inform them, "Hey, Zareth knows you're here. Zareth is here to kill you. Um, you got to get the fuck out right now." And you know, Sivir is too fucked up to be able to really fight back. He gives her some pendant that's like an anti scry type situation. It'll hide her from Zareth's sight for enough time so that she can get away. Um, and is it Sivir who kind of is able, who kind of commands him to go out and, and help, or is it? Talia? Yeah, yeah. They basically call him a little bitch. Yeah, they <laughs> do. Okay, so like, <laughs> great. Here, the thing about bloodlines you have to understand is that he's just Arnold Schwarzenegger from Terminator Two, right? Like that's the whole thing. <laughs> Oh my god. I order you. I order you. And she orders him to go fucking help Sharima. Because that's he's like, oh I'm here to help Sharima. She's like, well go help Sharima, you asshole. I'm here to help Sharima. <laughs> the hipster nest. Yeah. Uh, I I help I send a donation every every month. I've got a <laughs> thoughts and prayers. All right. I changed he changed his Sharima book profile picture. Anyway. <laughs> She convinces him. He goes up to go fight Zareth. And in the back of his head, even he's like, man, we barely even beat him. And did we even beat him when it was me and Zrenek at our prime? And that was just me. But he goes to fight him anyway. They fight it out. He gets his ass kicked. And he is essentially like all of his bones are broken. He's laying there prostrate before Zareth. And Zareth is kind of cackling about it. Um, and <laughs> just laughing at how well good of a job he's done. <laughs> and then he's like, well, I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> the butcher Renekton will have his due, but for now I will pull, you know what? I'll pull a page out of fucking uh, the Ruined King's playbook and I'll drop <laughs> a fucking building on you. So you'll just be oh my God, you're right. shit. <laughs> Barry count plus one. <laughs> As it's happening though, he notices that the ground around him seems to kind of crumble away and swell around him to meet this avalanche. 
and he's not crushed. He's actually in this weirdly, extremely smooth dome of stone, which has protected him. And as he breaks out and looks around, it's like, oh, there are a bunch of these. And they seem to have protected a lot of the people here. And he recognizes, ah, Talia, that stone weaver did this. Thanks, thanks, Talia, Talia, whatever. <laughs> and then uh, I think he resolves to go find Sivir. He heads off to the east as the root, the sand and desert swallow up that city behind him. It's so funny how, like, Sivir and Talia were like, yeah, please go save the people. And then ultimately, really, Talia was the one who helped everyone while also helping Sivir. Also, is Sivir always just getting, like, stabbed and murdered yes, all the time? I so. <laughs> the poor thing, I've never seen her not without a stab wound. I kind of hope. <laughs> several I kinda, things. I hope she's got two more stories and she's also stabbed in those ones. <laughs> I would love that. Bleeding. That's just her thing. Right. I've never even seen her with her weapon. <laughs> and it's been Azir, Cassiopeia, and now Nasus. Yeah. I guess that's a, oh, that's something too. Is he kind of tells her like, "Oh, you've got the Chalikar. It's a that's a big deal, you know." And I don't know what I still don't know what her being ascended like or as, of Azir's bloodline really does. It probably interacts with the magic TM in some way. So I, I actually, uh, I'm pretty sure this actually also ties into Twilight of the Gods. Oh, mm, uh, okay. because they do specifically mention a prophecy about Sivir. Um, oh yeah, they, yes. The uh, those crazy twins who are like spent. They're like two crows that spend the whole time doing like their uh their their uh, augury bone casting yeah yeah their augury um and they say uh it is the blade that will one day be born by savunus alahair the bringer of rains which is what? is it's a siver with a bunch of letters added I think, <laughs> yeah it's like ancient shereman for siver probably okay she's bringing the rain well, she, when she was revived, it brought the the waters back. Oh, fair. yeah, sure. Yeah, it's so a big this thing. This belongs to Sivir, who's going to get murdered. <laughs> Just <laughs> attempted. Brings the rain. <laughs> the world's Sorry. the world's most attempted murder victim. <laughs> Didn't she actually 900. get murdered? I guess she did. Cassie technically, kind of die there right? a little bit. Yeah. Sure. Well, you know, that's a good way to to get up in the the record books. There is to be able to survive actual murder murder attempts as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh. Yeah, this was this was another good one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I wrote down a, I wrote down a clip of the action piece. Okay, which again I thought was just very cool. NASA's <laughs> action. NASA's <laughs> NASA action. NASA action. <laughs> <laughs> Nasus met their charge head on, swinging low and splitting three of them in half with a single sweep of the blade. He put his fist through the chest of another and fastened his jaws on the bare head of the last man. Nasus bit down and the warrior's skull burst open. It's fucking metal uh, as imagine hell. Imagine reading this mm-hmm. and you're like, man, I gotta play Nasus in the <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> and then all you do is fucking stand Stack in lane <laughs> just whack minions over and over again Bonk. Hit him with Bonk. a cane you're slow now <laughs> Bonk. Bonk. yeah it's almost like, like a man Warwick. this wasting disease must be cool is it just a one shot like oh uh, okay, okay. <laughs> i like that he ults too and he doesn't ult when he fights zero yeah, he, he only ults earlier when he's intimidating these these people who have no chance against him whatsoever. Oh, that was another another thing. When he, the guy's claiming to be the descendant of Azir, and Nasus is like, "I need your blood to make sure." And the way he decides to get the blood, he has an axe, he has claws, he has teeth. He's like, "No, I'm gonna make a sandstorm. He's gonna sand him in the face. Must sand you so hard. I'm gonna sand right? you so hard. Your skin scrapes off and you bleed." Yeah, I don't there know are so many is... other ways, dude. Sure, like wouldn't it be? a little more in character maybe or feel more reasonable if he went up and was all super intimidating and then took just like the, the smallest amount necessary, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> Gave him a paper cut with one of his many books. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's supposed to be kind of, cause like we said, as he's going through the city, he's kind of very almost offended by how it's been mm-hmm. treated. Right. And maybe the idea of this person claiming to be this descended and, and putting on all these trappings and, but the thing is, he that would only piss him off if he knew that he wasn't actually a descendant, right? Yeah. Also, maybe it's not on this guy. Maybe his mom told him his whole life that <laughs> great great granddaddy is here. <laughs> he <laughs> thought was he didn't know. He went out for a pack of smokes. <laughs> 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 sure, right? That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Uh, but I did, I did like it for sure. I mean, um, 
you know, I I, th- I like his interactions with Talia and and Sivir. I, that's why yeah. I'm like I'm a little frustrated that this all seems to like this is there's not much more after this because I feel like this is a good first act in and you know yeah. something that could happen. Yeah, that's a lot of Shurima is when they did the event they really set up the past mm. <laughs> and there's not as much going on in the, the present. present. Although I think that's what Talia and um, like Kaisa are really up to right now is a that's lot true. Of present stuff. Yeah. But. Yeah. Hmm. Um, interesting note when Zareth did bring the building down on top of Nasus, mm-hmm. he said that they, uh, the bits of the building slammed down like the fists of ancient tomb guardians. And I'm pretty sure we'll be able to contextualize that in the Call to Power cinematic because I'm fairly certain that's what they're fighting <laughs> in that yeah. cinematic. Um, yeah. And Zareth also said, I'll get you my pretty. <laughs> And your little dog. You're a little dog. Too. You're a little dog. <laughs> like that. Okay, so I do have a couple. I do have frustrations around Zareth here, though. I like the NASA stuff for sure. I think it's it's well written, but I do have frustrations with Zareth. And the first thing I'll say is that all of the people who show up there as Zareth's army seem to be like enslaved, and he's like got some hold over them. Right, there's like a power that burns in their eyes, and then when he's fighting NASA, it like dissipates, and all of the the soldiers and raiders just kind of scamper off. And I feel like that's like mm-hmm. so like anathema to like what right. Zareth's whole thing is like yeah you could you could like that he could do it but that should be a whole story in and of itself in and of itself is like him making that decision to do this to people right yeah i, I yeah the, the, they really did make him such a one note villain i feel like yeah and he's and he, you know he get it like Ness is not good to that that sun priest guy or hawk priest whatever but Zareth is like peeling the flesh from his bones, like kind of just incidentally <laughs> as he's talking to Nasus, and then just like, you know, turns him to ash. Like he's just like yeah. super like a dick, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's very gruesome in a way that something had to have happened to you to get you to that point. And, and we see his whole life story, uh, you know, with Azir, and it's just not there. The backstory's mm-hmm. not there. You could argue it's when he's locked up with Renekton for centuries or whatever. Maybe. Um, I mean, for sure. that's probably the most likely thing. Yeah. Like, but... they, they really gloss it. Yeah, like, to your point, too, like, where he should have just been, like, some some, some shit, asshole. Some he's just a fucking shit little shit. Friend he, like, killed Azir bunnies and, and stuff as a kid. Because, like, I could see, like, him getting very into, like, dark magic and everything. Like, it could have a twisting effect that, uh, you know, once that started... Yeah, then getting locked away can mm-hmm. lead to that extra madness. But they really don't, like, they did not really hone... Well, we haven't gotten to Zareth yet, but to my knowledge, they don't yeah. really hone in on, like, how much the dark magic might be twisting him that would account for the extra madness that yeah. Yeah. resulted. Absolutely. Especially because right. he keeps teasing that Renekton has, you know, lost his shit and he's just a villain now, too. But, I, I mean, I think we can probably guess that he's not... Yeah, from the little I bit I read of some of the Renekton stuff, I just kind of skimmed it for this. Um, mm-hmm. It seems like there's there's maybe the tiniest bit of, like, core that could be, I don't know if recovered, but maybe, right? Like, that would be mm-hmm. some crucial cinematic moment, you know, he he, he, he <laughs> turns his blade on Zareth at the very end, right? Like, very Darth Vader type situation. Right. Yeah, you know? yeah. So maybe. Darth Gator. <laughs> oh, my God. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Oh, so man. we've had Barkenstock and Darth Gator so far. Yes, the baby's not out yet, John. <laughs> <laughs> Got the hat trick lined up. Uh, uh, another, some more interesting things about this story. Uh, you, when you had mentioned earlier, actually, about how, um, how uh, th- there was kind of like that that oath thing when Nasus was like, "Oh, I've got to protect Sharima." Um, and when he said it, he meant like, I've got to protect you because to me, you are Sharima. And then she was like, well, go out there, protect Sharima, <laughs> like they're Sharima. It had a very Yasuo Yone vibe where like Yone mm-hmm. was like, oh, we must protect Ionia. And he meant it as like, you need to protect our leader. And Yasuo was like, I'm trying to protect Ionia. I'm out here fighting. Um, I haven't gotten to why yet, John. Are you reading ahead? <laughs> it's, it's part of the cinematic. Read right ahead in the text. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but the the reason that stuck out to me too is because I had actually already written down another note here, which also reminded me it had big fucking Yone vibes where uh, Nasus was said uh, 
better to be broken and burdened than to be an oath breaker. Mm-hmm. Which Yone has that line where Yasuo's like, look around you, brother, your honor stains the ground. And Yone's like, better than living without it. Mm-hmm. They're so fucking dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I'll I be think very... even as little boys, they just talk to each other like that. I would love it. <laughs> I would fucking love it, honestly. <laughs> so okay. That would be kind of fun, though, honestly, because they would be kind of like, if they were like playing, you know, and they're like, oh, we're playing up dramatics because we're playing a little game. And then it became <laughs> real. <laughs> yeah, I'll be interested uh. to, to kind of when we get there, for sure, because I'm not as, I know the broad strokes, um, but maybe to make that comparison again and see like if, like, like if it's there, because I think that connection's there for sure. Like as we're, you're talking through it. Uh, last thing I had was that I feel like this was some high power level on Talia shit that we haven't necessarily seen before. Covered the whole fucking town up in domes all at once. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty awesome. Maybe it's like a more targeted version of her ult, almost. Which mm. I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd be, I'm gonna be interested to get to Talia for sure. Um, like I said, she's like kind of like a. I'm still I'm still on the Terminator 2 train. Like she's she's a little, <laughs> but she is uh, Sarah Connor. That's the twist, right? And Sivir is John Ooh. Connor. Yeah. <laughs> a little Sivir. Look, so we get Ma- hurt. People look out for. Right. Nasus knows why you cry, but it's something he can never do. Which is a callback to the Azir <laughs> episode where he says that oh, he shit. wants to shed a tear but can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dogs don't cry. I don't know. But yeah, pretty well, good. Uh, mm-hmm. Nasus does show up in several other stories. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've got a list of them here. Uh, he shows up in Darkness Renews, which is a great look at how Zareth went about torturing Renekton when mm-hmm. they were uh, stuck in the cave for so long. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, too, that Renekton always refers to Zareth as the Whisperer. And those whispers kind of stick with him throughout life now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Halfway Between the Stars and Earth where uh, we find out that Soraka has a carving of Nasus in her house that she got from Nashrame. <laughs> oh. Uh, and then in Monstrous, we just kind of learn that uh, people say prayers to Nasus to protect them from the void. And then they also have the line, if they really knew the truth, they'd never come within a thousand miles of uh, of where Akathia once stood. <laughs> 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 Which makes me think that like, uh, you know, every story wanted to use the line, and then someone read it afterwards, and they were like, "Shit, this line is everywhere. Should we just write a story about this? <laughs> Maybe we should just explain what happened where Cathia once stood." <laughs> uh, then we've got with teeth, which is another pretty cool fucking story. This mm-hmm. is like right in the aftermath of Bloodline, um, where Renekton encounters a party camping out in the ruins of the town that got destroyed. Um, the Vizora, Vicora, yes. Vicora, yeah. that's the one. Yeah. Um, and asks them for info about Nasus, basically. Like, hey, I need to find him. Then you're going to tell me. Uh, there's an awesome battle here between Renekton and the leader of this band, who is like a, this great Vestayan warrior who had like uh, magical armor and weapon and, you know, went toe to toe with Renekton for kind of a while. And it was looking real even. And then. Renekton and ulted and <laughs> undid <Yeah. and> everything. <laughs> uh, it was a very cool story, though. Um, yes. And we we do see kind of more of way m- not like a human side of Renekton, but way way less of like a maddened beast side of Renekton. Maybe more, way more rational side of Renekton, I guess, in this story. Yeah, Still absolutely. Still very angry and violent, but like a lot more. Uh, I mean, he like kind of and... he like sandbags that fight even right. There's like like you said, he's not like just a a blood written beast he can kind of think and plan um and he's he's a lot more lucid than i expected i would say yeah Hmm. Uh, and then he also shows up in the battle mistress which is the silver bio uh the butcher of the sands which is the renekton bio emperor of the sands the azir bio (laughs) and the magus ascendant which is the zareth bio Mm -hmm. it's all over the place (laughs) yeah yeah he really is some old lore Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I've got 34 minutes before I have to test my blood sugar, so <laughs> let's go. All right. So old bio shit. Um, 
NASA's was another one of those people that was just lived on a completely different plane of existence. <laughs> they loved that. Huh? Yeah. And uh, he was a respected leader and his title was Keeper of the Great Library. Um, but others of his race, which were just described as a, a race of animalistic creatures, hmm. um, were fighting to enslave the people and establish a total totalitarian <laughs> sovereignty. Uh, during a fight against his treacherous brother Renekton, <gasps> he was pulled into Valoran. <laughs> Huh. Um, and after being pulled in, he gravitated towards Sharima, since it reminded him of home, and took the title Keeper of the Sands, which is kind of sad. He's like, I was a keeper of a library, but I guess I'll just, <laughs> just look after these little tiny these rocks. There's <laughs> 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 a lot of early ideas there, like the animal people, like the Steins, yeah. kind of turned mm. into that. I, I think, I think they that's... They always had the brothers' idea too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's it's just so much like they really liked that aesthetic, that kind of Egyptian mm. aesthetic, mm. and they didn't really know how to fit him in. I'm like, hey, it's from another plane of existence. <laughs> it's like the most don't worry about whatever is going on in the old yeah. his old home because he's never going back type situation. Uh, and then he shows up in one Journal of Justice article, issue eight, in the mailbag of justice. <laughs> Uh, some summoner wants to know where Nasus came from, specifically. <laughs> Don't yeah. worry about it. We just said. Uh, they are told Nasus is tight-lipped about his <laughs> land of origin. Uh, while it's known he was once a caretaker of a great library, all you'll get out of him are grumblings about how his brother Renekton will never let go of their grudge regardless of how many worlds stand between them. Pair that with a few riddles about the cycle of life and death, and that's about all you'll hear from the curator of the sands before he's brooding again. Hmm. Well, I'm glad they changed the dynamic between the, the brothers, you know. Mm. It's less about, like, a single betrayal or whatever, and, you know, they were much closer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, I know that's something that... Doesn't now Renekton kind of see Nasus as, like, a betrayer... But he's been all after being, you know, warped and twisted by Zareth, right? Like, that's a little bit yeah, of what it's like now. Like several hundred years. Yeah. yeah. But it's not just some generic, like, oh, he's the tre he's treacherous. My backstory yeah, yeah, says yeah. so, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got, like, you know, Zareth just manipulating him for hundreds of years until now he finally believes it. Mm, it doesn't yeah. seem to remember that he was like, hey, Nasus, lock me in here, dude. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean. Epic prank, I feel bro. like. <laughs> when we record episodes and then I listen to them a week later, I've forgotten half of what I said, so I could get that. <laughs> That's fair. Sure. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, and he shows up in one comic, uh, The Fall of the Empire, mm. which is literally just the story of the failed ascension into the ceiling of Zareth, but in a five-panel comic. Okay. <laughs> Riveting. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then he's in a few cinematics. <clears throat> I, like, didn't realize, honestly. I'm trying to picture him in <laughs> cinematics, and, yeah. So, the first one, and this is kind of, like, the only, I guess, real time we get to see modern-day NASA in a cinematic, is the Call of Power cinematic, which is the Rise one, where he's traveling around the land gathering world runes. Um, and in Sharima... He must have had to have gotten one of those runes from a crypt because he and Nasus seem to be fighting a massive ass tomb guardian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, Nasus cuts a huge stone in half and uses wither. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing that the scene cuts there because it doesn't show the thing just like continuing to stomp forward, not like completely right. <laughs> unaffected by it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh,. The Descendant into the Tomb, which is the cinematic that tells the story of Sivir unlocking Zareth and Renekton's tomb and Cass's betrayal. Uh, the whole thing is narrated by Nasus. Um, mm -hmm. Additionally, the follow-up to that, Rise of the Ascended, picks up where the last one left off, where Sivir's blood revived Azir, Azir rescues Sivir, and in doing so becomes Ascended and revives Old Sharima. Also narrated by Nasus. <laughs> Then we've got Welcome to League of Legends. Oh. Where you Nasus... Know, this is going to be good and timely. <laughs> Nasus and Morgana are fighting Kale. Uh, Nasus cane smacks Kale after Morgana knocks her helmet off. And then right about... Right as he's about to collect a stack from her, uh, Rise rune prisms him and ults, maybe? His alt has changed so many times that you really can't tell when he's alting an old cinematic. Yeah, I don't remember. You know. Uh, and then in the final freeze frame at the end, Nasus is the one who ruptures the earth, which uh, 
causes the other team to have to jump into the air, which causes the cool freeze frame moment. Oh, I miss the old rough of the earth, make everyone jump in the air mechanic and leave. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, those are the good old days. Right. Oh, man. Uh, now he also shows up in the blooper reel for that cinematic. <laughs> Uh, at the final freeze frame, after Nasus rupture, raptures the rupture, I had it right the first time. <laughs> after Nasus ruptures the Earth, uh, Rise fails to do the cool uh, good guys jumping oh, for the freeze no. frame and trips instead, causing other people to fall. And it's a big old goofy freeze frame at the end instead. Nasus. And this is actually the first time I've ever noticed this about this final freeze frame. Uh, Cho'Gath inexplicably has become Gentleman Cho'Gath in the final freeze frame of this one. (laughs) (laughs) Which was neat. Nice. Uh, And then in the second blooper reel for this cinematic, in the final freeze frame, instead of conjuring a ball of pure magic in his hand, Ryze conjures a tennis ball and tosses it, reverting (laughs) Nasus into a puppy and his tongue lolls out and he chases the ball excitedly <laughs> so uh the final freeze frame is a close-up of nasus running at the camera with his mouth open to catch the ball i do like that gag that one does give me <laughs> uh, why did he chase the ball and not warwick who was also on his team who knows that would have been yeah that would have been smart yeah oh they should have fought over it yeah yeah so that's that uh there's not a whole lot in his quotes really yeah uh He's in the Legends of Rune Terra cinematic too. I will say. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, hit me with that. Yeah, it was for the. It was oh, when they did right, the, right. The Shuriman release for Rune Terra. Um, it's following this guy who I think is a card. I don't remember. Um, and he's he essentially is kind of he's he's going after some MacGuffin, and at some point he ends up in Nasus's library, I guess, and uh, Nasus kind of withers him or something like that and takes a hold of the, the MacGuffin to inspect it, I guess. And then Renekton shows up and they fight and the guy gets the MacGuffin and gets away. And it, apparently he was working under Azir's direction and, and took it to Azir. I don't know what that thing is. I think they said what it was on Twitter, <laughs> but I don't think it's mentioned anywhere else ever. Um, and it's mostly just Nasus fights Renekton for a few a few seconds. Um, which is fine, I guess. But I don't think it's canon or anything. I don't know. Mm. Maybe that MacGuffin Never thing know. is. Yeah. You know. Never know with Legends of Runeterra. Yeah. yeah. Anything could be or couldn't be. It's Wild West. That's Yeah, absolutely. That's actually true. Uh, so, from his quotes, your soul will be measured, uh, references Anubis from Egyptian mythology, which mm-hmm. also, you know, is kind of his character design. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hope is the opiate of the frail, References Karl Marx's religion is the opiate of the masses. Oh. And uh, by fire, be purged is a uh, either a uh, Kaelfis Sunstrider or Ragnaris reference, both from Warcraft. Hmm. Neat. <laughs> yeah. Nerd. <laughs> uh, also, the Who Let the Dogs Out reference that I uh, mm-hmm. quoted at the mm-hmm. beginning is different right. in oh. the Brazilian, Italian, and Polish translations, each one oh. referencing something that might be more relevant to them. <laughs> what oh, do you mean? That wasn't a worldwide hit? <laughs> Come on, man. Baja man worldwide. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. That's, that's, that's interesting, though. Yeah. What a dumb song. <laughs> and now it's in my fucking head. You're welcome. <laughs> Look, it asks yeah. a pertinent question. It drives the audience <laughs> to engage with it. <laughs> It's everything I ask for in music. Right. <laughs> Just those two things. <laughs> uh, so any thoughts on uh, Canon Nasus before we hop into the AUs? I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the writing on his actual stories is all very, very good. Um, yeah. I just... Yeah. So like I said, it's kind of a shame that he seems to be stuck in, in stasis, and I don't think he'll get unfrozen anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> True. I will say, uh, to their credit, too... Um, having Anthony Reynolds, Lene on the bio, Graham McNeil on one of the short stories, and then that um, that Ryan dude on the other short story. I feel like writing wise and character wise, like um, very consistent. very very consistent, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. which isn't True. always the case when you split something like that across <laughs> three writers for these. So they did yeah. a good job keeping that. Yeah, we've definitely seen that with some characters. <laughs> sure. 
Yeah, it's a good thing to compliment, honestly, because like you said, we com- we complain about it so much. It is good to be like, hey, they can, <laughs> they they did it proper here, you know. All right, AU time, baby. Yeah. Let's go. We'll start with Galactic. This uh, old ass splash. <laughs> Now, I don't know how true this is, but the lore blurb for this AU on the wiki says that it is inspired by the Battlestar Galactica IP. What? There's there's no skin lore for the individual skins, though, and visually it looks way more like Stargate. I mean, it's definitely Stargate. Or even Starcraft. He's got the big feet, though. Oh, oh, nice. (laughs) Oh, the classic feet. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely. And also a dick spike. Yeah, kind of, it's a dangling one, but it's there. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. It's good. We should call them. You know, that once you hit, he's generations old. Not all dick spikes can <laughs> remain upright. <laughs> it has fallen. Oh, man. <laughs> Part of him is ascended, but not all. Of it. <laughs> oh man! All right, what's, what's, what's the what's half ascended with? demigod? Oh, or Nasus? Uh, Getting it rough. Uh, also, fun fact about this is Renekton's galactic splash er, uh, has him stepping on the head of a NASA statue. Oh, I was like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm looking at NASA, so I'm an idiot. Uh, next up, we got Lost Empire. The city states of the great desert have long been lost to time, but their ruins and the ancient pharaohs who once ruled them lie hidden just beneath the sands. And this one's Pharaoh Nasus. A mortal beast of the northern lands, Nasus wanders the expanse of the great desert in search of his once green kingdom. He conjures vast sandstorms to cover his tracks, hiding his existence from the world. He's fucking ripped in this one. He is. Also, I feel like his lore is just Nasus, but his costume is Pharaoh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like alternate alternate version Nasus. Like, just a a slightly (laughs) different stream in history. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah he is shredded damn <laughs> right dude's fucking ripped I guess he is his in his base right splash too especially. to be fair yeah hmm. uh, next up we got Dread Knight set in an alternate Freljord it features champions as part of an undead undead knight order this is definitely just like inspired by death knights from Warcraft for sure um, Dread Knight Nasus. Dread Knight Nasus serves as keeper of the forgotten texts deep within the catacombs of his master's labyrinthine library. It is said that within lies the secret of the Dread Knight's undoing, but no living soul has yet verified whether this is true or fable. So this is Nasus. Yep. But in a different costume. <laughs> and he's so fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got Infernal. Nasus, but he's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Uh, this is in a setting where the Ashen Lord has been summoned and transformed the world into a land of ashes, cinder, and fire. Infernal Nasus. The great infernals are somehow even more cruel and hateful than their lesser counterparts, and Nasus is no exception. A three headed monstrosity raised from some far flung hellish abyss, he withers life with his merest touch, then burns it away. Mm. So, Evil yeah. on fire, Nasus. Okay, mm. <laughs> I guess he's not a librarian in this one, which is all I can ask for. That's yeah. just true. He would burn all the. I little was gonna books. say, yeah, <laughs> he was a librarian until the tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got high society, and this I think is the first skin I've seen that's part of multiple AUs. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, probably not the first, but it's rare. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Archduke Nasus. In primary school, Nasus was told an old dog couldn't learn new tricks. Oh, God. Now, in his older years, as an accomplished statesman, painter, and composer, he wonders if there's truth in those words. After all, he simply cannot seem to get his chamber orchestra to listen to his directions. <laughs> okay. uh, and he's also part of Cats vs. Dogs with the oh. same... Oh. Same skin. So that setting is uh, set in a world where cats and dogs reign. Each of the champions represent an opposing faction battling against each other. In the splash art for uh, cats versus dogs, um, he's he's very much he's not like a background character, and he's very heavily featured there, much as he is very heavily featured in the April Fools uh, 
you know, yeah. splash that Archduke Nassus is originally from. Okay. Uh, yeah, Wiki has Archduke or the the April Fool one for for Archduke Nassus. Hmm. Neat. He gets around. <laughs> Well, he's cultured. <laughs> <laughs> he's a renaissance man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> renaissance man. <laughs> Next up, we got World Breaker. <laughs> in the end, the moon will smother the sun, and in that hopeless dawn, four titans will rise to shatter the world itself. And we've got World Breaker Nasus, who is the fourth titan. The last of four titans prophesied to shatter the world, Nasus is the true end of all things. A monstrous abomination of smoke and flame, he will emerge from the bottom of the earth in a column of hungry fire, devouring all of existence. And there's some um, uh, Legends of Runeterra flavor text for this one. Uh, oh, hear the earth tremble. At sunrise, the fourth titan will arise in a blaze of hellfire and glory just as the prophecy of the first destruction foretold. I fear that the end is nearing, but however many souls he devours, it will not be enough. At sundown, he shall swell in size, stretching out towards the vast all-seeing cosmos. As the final sliver of sunlight disappears, so shall the earth. Damn. Yeah. He doesn't fuck around. <laughs> uh, and there is technically a short story associated with this called Prophecy of the World Breakers. It's just a quick prophecy about how each of them is going to fuck things up. Uh, in the end, the moon will smother the sun. Oh, it starts the same way. And then it says, uh, <laughs> first comes the flood from the depths, drowning cities as they sleep. That's Nautilus. <laughs> Second comes the frost that stills the oceans and freezes the deserts. That one's... Uh, 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 I, I don't remember. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Trundle, boy. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> troll. Uh, I can't remember. The trollman. Uh, third comes the rampaging shadow, blanketing the world in dread, which I'm pretty sure is uh, Hecarim. Mm -hmm. And when time ends, fourth comes the final fire, devouring every ill fated soul in sight. Reminds me of, like, the Ether Fiend from, like, the Kindred episode. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I could see that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And next up, we got Battlecast. The glorious revolution is here. Assembling an army of machines with living brains, Victor marches against the combined forces of his enemies with only a scrappy human-led resistance keeping him from total world domination. This one is Battlecast Nasus. The latest monstrosity constructed by Victor, Battlecast Nasus. Battlecast Nasus units specialize in the targeted retrieval of high-priority targets. As they hunt for their quarry, with machinery is programmed to learn and adapt, increasing their destructive capacity and empowering them to obliterate all that would stand in their way. Okay, it's weird that there's a lot of Nas Nasi. Nasi? <laughs> I know, right? That's what, that's what like, threw me off at first. Yeah, hearing that uh. is like, oh, it's a stumbling point for me. All right, <laughs> makes sense, I guess. Uh, then we got Lunar Rebel. Uh, a gift to the young Lunar Empress, Nasus was raised alongside her to guard the immortal realm from an ancient darkness. Stoic but powerful, he stands watch in the north, annihilating all who would threaten the land. Hmm. I do like this one. Oh, oh, sorry. He yeah, has a nice one. Hmm. Is this Lunar? Yeah. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen this one. It's called Lunar Guardian? Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, there's a cinematic that goes along with it called Unite Against the Dark, which we went over in the Morgana episode, where uh, Lux received two loyal guardians to protect her from the darkness, but over time they drifted apart until darkness attacked. But uh, that brought them back together, and they defeated the darkness and ushered into an age of light. Morgana was the darkness. Mm -hmm. And Caitlin. Oh. <laughs> I am the darkness. <laughs> Finally, we got Space Groove. In a groovy galaxy, a million disco infernos away, a mysterious energy known only as the Groove brings music and prosperity to trillions of galactic citizens. But when the alien overlord Lysandra and her army of harsh vibes begin to enslave planets and suppress disco music, a new age of heroes rise to stop her and keep the party groovin'. This one is Space Groove Nasus. A storied disc jockey, music librarian, and leader of the dog planet, Nasus was once <laughs> under Lysandra's thrall, seizing all his people's grooviest records and hiding them away, never to be heard again. 
Yet now, with his heart opened and the power of Disco, he leads his people in rebellion against the deadly shock troopers Blitz and Crank. <laughs> awesome. I love that. I That's love, great. <laughs> I love this skin because it's like, fr- from the silhouette, you could tell this is Nasus. But it's just a little puppy in a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like if you look at his helmet, it's this cute little chubby dog that looks nothing like Nasus. Right? Just piloting a Nasus. Just dude. piloting. <laughs> yeah, he's just I think so the voice. Good. Yeah, I think the VO is all different too. Is that right with this one? Yeah. I, or like really some sort of filter sense. at least, I would bet. Maybe that's when he sounds like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Give the people what I they want. super high pitched. <laughs> uh but uh, this has a short cinematic called Exploration, which is kind of mm-hmm. like a music video um, along with the animation, which is just like a very funky 80s style anime video. <laughs> it's pretty cute. Mm-hmm. And that's it for a use. Nice. Good job, honey. Thank you. <laughs> I've only got a handful of fun facts. Uh, so, number one, he was originally voiced by Gene McDaniels. Um, but after the actor's death, he's now voiced by Eric Todd Dellums in both League and Legends of Runeterra. Oh, damn, that was a dark one. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. We didn't start off as fun. Yeah, it's not a fun fact. Sorry, I didn't have a separate section for the... For the dark facts? For the, yeah. <laughs> sad facts. We'll have a fun and a sad <laughs> fact next time. We will recognize that actor as Three Dog from uh, Fallout 3, or at least his current voice actor. Oh, shit. Yeah, which I thought was, that was neat. Hmm. Nice. Uh, Nasus literally means nose in Latin, and Nasus has a big nose. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, in the old forums, the original icon for uh, Fury of the Sands, like his, uh, his alt, was used to represent the player concepts and champion feedback sections of the forums. Cool. Uh, Nasus is over 3,796 years old, but Jesus. less than 3,900 years old. <laughs> so we have a bit of a range there. Great. Dope. Uh, Renek was one of the nations that belonged to the ancient Shuriman Empire and was possibly located somewhere near the Renek River, and the siblings may have originated from there, which may be where Renekton got his name. Mm. I don't mm-hmm. think any of that is officially confirmed, but just, you know, presumed because there is a Renek region and a Renek River. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Renekton's a strange name. There's no, like, repeated names in, in Runeterra, huh? Not even Sarah Fortune. Is there another Sarah in Runeterra? Is there nope. another Annie? I don't know. There's certainly not another Renekton, right? Could you imagine? Mm. Nasus is looking for Renekton. Someone finally leads it to him, and it's just some fucking schmuck, some... dude. <laughs> there is a shared name. It's LeBlanc, because everyone is LeBlanc. Oh, that's true. Shit. You're right. Okay. Sorry. More fun facts. Oddly enough, there's like 30 fiddlesticks. It's a very popular name. <laughs> it's charting. It's, it's just like uh, number 10 this year. <laughs> uh, Nasus is one of 13 champions that have an ability that infinitely stacks an effect. And he's one of six pairs of sibling champions, <laughs> not counting the trio of siblings, mm. Mm. the old gods. Yeah. And finally, Infernal Nasus's dance references Drop It Like It's Hot by wow. Snoop Dogg. I do like that. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's great. That's it for my fun facts. Nice. They were super fun. Thanks. Yeah. Any final Nasus thoughts? Um, uh, real quick, Legends of Runeterra stuff. I know we talked about mm. Bakai before, which I think are kind of like failed, ascended. I don't really know what the deal is with those guys because they only ever show up in Runeterra, and I think they just exist kind of to serve like the gameplay functions that you know Nasus <laughs> as a card needs. <laughs> but he seems to hang out with them. And he seems to like like be to know them and and chill with them down in the tombs and stuff. And they kind of seem to help him or serve him. But I don't know. That's probably just like a Runeterra thing specific. So. Mm. <laughs> That's the only thing to to throw out there, but I can dig that. Yeah, I don't know. Aside from that, I would like I, I like the stories. I would like more. I think if they if they all yeah. maintain this level of quality, and you gave like him a good two more X, could be a really really strong character in their their collection. But he's only got two arms. How could he hold two more X? <laughs> 
<laughs> that was Nasus. Thank you for listening. <laughs> I hope you turned it off before that last one that John had to slip in there at the end. <laughs> It was it was such a stretch. Are you okay? Did you hurt yourself stretching? That I bring far? value. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I won't say that you don't. <laughs> anyway, we have a Twitter. It's at Loreheads, and we stream on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Loreheads. By the time you listen to this, we probably only have a few streams left for a little bit. <laughs> but uh, we usually play League Saturdays, and John does TFT on Mondays. And if we don't stream Saturdays, then we'll do league and tft on mondays <laughs> that's been happening more we also post these on youtube and john has some fun parodies there and we have a discord if you want to join in on these great discussions <laughs> and chat mostly with john because he's the best at checking the discord <laughs> uh and we have a patreon thank you so much to all of our patrons mm, but a very special thank you Boys. to our <laughs> madarda and all chat to your patrons chloe things great scott nine King of Hearts, Mylect, Rel, Shuba Mustache, and the Void Event is here! Maybe. <laughs> you are all great, and even if it meant saving Shirima, I wouldn't seal you in a tomb with Zareth. Aww. Aww. He would let us all die. Yep. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, be sure to join us next week, because we're going to talk about the Titan of the Depths Nautilus. I really struggled with the word depths there. Depths. <laughs> depths. Titan of the depths. Depths. <laughs> depths. I know. It's- <laughs> <laughs>